When we talk about this idea of hope, I think we're missing an important piece. And the omission has not served us particularly well. Most of us think of hope as a positive concept. Yet when we look at the definition of hope, it says it's the expectation or desire that a certain thing will occur. Sometimes we create a great deal of angst and suffering in the difference between where we currently are and this place that we look longingly to, wishing, hoping, wanting to be in. We focus on the control we don't have to create something in the future rather than finding peace and truth where we currently are. When I became a newly single person after my divorce, I was filled with hope of new beginnings. I had worked so hard to get to where I was. We had transformed our family in love. I had come out as gay in a pretty public way. And I finally felt free to be me. I was ready for loving, authentic connection. And yet, as I looked left, and I looked right, and I scanned the horizon, saying to the world, here I am, world, I'm ready for love. <laughs> the love of my life was not showing up. And I found that that hoping, 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 led to a place of angst and disappointment. And I hung out in that hopeful disappointment for quite some time, until I shifted into, into a new realization. And I realized that in that moment, what I was feeling was open-hearted longing for loving connection. And what I was grateful for in that moment was having a few good friends who saw me and loved me for who I was. And what I held the vision of was that loving, authentic partnership that would someday show up. Over time, that vision did come to fruition, but not because I willed it into being, but because I had found peace and truth in the moment. What happens when we create new lyrics to an old refrain? Instead of wishing, hoping, wanting, we say instead, what am I feeling in this moment? What am I grateful for in this moment? And what do I hold the vision of? Because those three things center us in this moment, and that gives us access to peace and truth. Learning to reach for those three things works in even the most dire of situations, where the line between life and death dangles right in front of us, and we are challenged beyond measure by our inability to control the outcome. On New Year's Eve day, I sat in a parking lot with our pup an hour away from our home at one of the only animal hospitals that was open and accepting emergency patients. Our very concerned vet had called numerous places the night before trying to get her admitted, but with extreme staffing shortages, no one would take her. There was a four hour wait just to be triaged, and we waited in the car. 45 pounds of very sick, fluffy puppy love and me. And she kept looking at me with these big, beautiful brown eyes, still attempting to wag her tail, looking into my soul. And I kept looking back at her, this being who had crawled into all of our hearts, but who had come into our family for my teen, this pup's primary person. And I kept thinking of my teen at home, already dealing with health and well-being challenges, and what life might look like if my baby never got to wrap arms around this baby again. And I started reaching, first for hope, my desired outcome. But that made me feel like I couldn't catch my own breath and that I was going to crawl out of my skin. And I couldn't hang out in that space for five minutes, let alone four hours, especially if I wanted to be of any comfort to this little one. So I reached instead for my new three. One. In this moment, what am I feeling? Sheer terror at the possibility we might lose this one and what that might mean for my loved one at home. What am I grateful for in this moment? Well, I'm grateful for being in a parking lot of an open hospital that has equipment and doctors right beyond those doors who will do everything they can to save her if they can. What do I hold the vision of? I hold the vision of this pup being healthy and well, 
and running around, loving on us in all of her wild and silly ways. And with that, I found peace. I reconnected to what was true in that moment. After two nights in their ICU, our pup did come back home to us and began what was a slow and long recovery from what we believe was a severe allergic reaction, extremely rare, to a routine medication given during a routine procedure. We'll never know for sure what led to those terrifying events, but what I do know is what allowed me to stay present with her in that moment and all the moments that followed. We can learn new lyrics to an old refrain. Instead of wishing and wanting and hoping, we can choose instead to say, in this moment, what am I feeling? What am I grateful for in this moment? And I hold the vision of, and we hold that vision, whatever it is, with intention rather than attachment. These three things ground us in the moment in which we stand. They connect us to the power of gratitude and intention. And they give us access to peace and truth in every moment that we choose them. And that is something for which we can all hope. Thank you.